I'm Brad. I'm Connor. I'm Tyler. And I'm Katie. And, and the August What's Meat starts, starts right now. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Caboose, sharing our passion for trains since 1938. This is What's Neat for August 2019. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got an absolutely fantastic show. First of all, we look at graffiti artist and stencil artist, Pete Walliger. He shares his work with us in a video called Eyes on Trains. It's a real treat to see that this month on What's Neat. We also visit the Magic House in Kirkwood, Missouri, where James Regeer shares with us a beautiful layout that he takes care of out there. It's behind glass, it's double deck, and it's a real treat to see this month. On the road with Michelle Kempema, we visit Train World where she interviews Ken Bianco Jr. It's absolutely amazing to see this train store that it is that is in its third generation of operation. Campbell Rice shares with us Joe Atkinson's Iowa Interstate Railroad. It's an HO scale. It's a very prototype railroad. You guys are going to love the detail on this layout this month. And with that, that's the lineup for August 2019 What's Neat. I do want to say that if you're in the Lakewood, Colorado area, please be sure to visit Caboose. It's got to be one of the biggest and most well-stocked train stores that I have ever seen. That's Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado, or you can order your supplies online at mycaboose.com. And so with that, let's get on the rest with this August 2019 What's Neat. My name is Pete Eyes Walliger. Um, I'm an internationally known stencil artist. Um, I am known for my signature eye. Um, I put it out on the streets to wake up the world. The reason I'm doing Eyes on Trains, um, about a year and a half ago, a scrapper was following me on Instagram and he said, Pete, would you like to come to my scrap yard? I'm scrapping full-size locomotives. And to a graffiti artist, to paint a um, full-size locomotive is everyone's dream. So I, of course, and it spawned this entire series of going to the scrap yard week after week after week after week and painting trains and then essentially picking them and using them as my canvas for my exhibition. these trains are being scrapped, they're being melted down, they've traveled millions of miles across America and ultimately are worth more as scrap metal than as a train on the tracks. Um, and part of me doing the show is to save those trains and to also kind of be the, the mortician, you know, the mortician to the trains before they die, to really just give them a face, an identity, um, just to kind of, you know, give them their final farewell. And uh, in a way I kind of feel like 
I'm saving their lives in some sense because I'm reclaiming a lot of the parts off of these. The show is going to be at Hoffman Lachance Gallery in Maplewood. Um, it's Like I said, it's been a year and a half in the making. It's been just a lot of just figuring out how to get from A to Z. I mean, we moved a train into the gallery and, you know, I don't know what it takes to get that, but luckily I have a good friend by the name of Eddie Bauer who knows how to do that. He went and picked up a train from the scrapyard, brought it to my studio, and then really brought that train from my studio into the gallery, which uh, was quite an undertaking. So about six months ago, I was asked to do a massive mural in Indianapolis. The only stipulation is like we want a, a mural with positive messages. So I get to this wall and I'm looking at it and it's this really, it's really wide and short and there's 40 of them all separated. And I'm like, man, those sure look like boxcars each logo on the train which i've carried over now to my show has positive messages like instead of the frisco logo it says forgive and it's the biggest mural now in indianapolis but if you want to see that uh the hashtag is the uh, monon love train These trains have traveled millions of miles and it's one of the most iconic images that we see. They're in everyone's life and they're kind of dying, you know, in a way. And I want people to realize that this isn't just a piece of art. This is something that's traveled across America that now has been reclaimed and hopefully will sit in someone's house for the next, and maybe a museum for the next 300 years. You never know. I mean, to see this train go into this door, it was almost like that weight that I've had on me for the past year and a half, knowing that, oh my gosh, eventually I gotta get a train in the door, and we did it. It was one of the best feelings of my life. It's finally like, you have the idea, here it is, and you know, now it's in there. So, you know, I'm doing this train show and the first thing you think of when, tr when you think of trains are the mini trains. So this has been another part of the whole aspect. I mean, I've always been into trains. I've painted a few trains in the past in my life, uh, but I never really got into the model world. And one thing I wanted to kind of show is a miniature version of this scrapyard. So I've been going to all these train shows, been meeting all the foamers, which by the way is a name for the people who foam when they see these big trains and freak out, but that's the name. But I mean, there could be a whole documentary just filmed on these folks who are diehard trainers. And it's mostly not the non-graffiti stuff, they like it clean. So I'm hoping somehow I can break into that world, you know, like be the next Thomas the Train, but for 2015, you know. So the key people for this show have really just been kind of the drive and the motivation for it are about five people, uh, one being Nick Pistone, who owns the scrapyard. My homegirl Irene, she has been completely all a part of this from the beginning. I think she, she was even like friends with this guy on Instagram and was like, we need to go out there and was really kind of the drive to getting this whole train things going. And she's a bencher, she hangs out and looks at trains. So she's really kind of helped me. The third being Eddie Bauer, who I've known my entire life. This is the guy who moved the train from here to here to here. And then I have an assistant by the name of Cam, uh, just a neighborhood cat who's been there a lot. And then Will Rimmel, who's a very great artist and, and you know, has been helping me get from A to B, you know, so, or A to Z. Trains are 
the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. I mean, they are, you know, we got a super train coming up next. I mean, it's the next generations of trains happening. I mean, the trains especially that I'm covering are the ones that I saw growing up. I didn't see the steam engines, and that's what you see the train shows, you know? And I like the, the old rusty, big Union Pacific orange train. So it's been, a, it's been an amazing opportunity. Um, I don't think I'd ever have something like this fall in my lap again. You never know, but it's just like one of these scenarios that like, all right, I got to see this through and I'm about that close. So, so after St. Louis, I'd love to travel this technically on a train to different cities, to Miami, New York. I have a couple galleries that I've been talking to. Nothing is set in stone. So if you know anybody who wants to take a train to their city, this uh, could be a pretty impressive show. But yeah, I want to travel this, let the world see a little bit of St. Louis and a little bit of our history. Um, they take these trains back to the cities they've already traveled to and, you know, it could be pretty awesome. Hold me do one more. Eyes on trains, yo. Peace. On this segment of What's Neat, I'm with Joe Atkinson in his beautiful HO Scale Iowa Interstate Railroad. Joe, I appreciate you showing us your, your layout system here with the What's Neat show. Um, tell me just a little bit right quick, how did you get involved in the hobby? I started out when I was a kid, I had a, a newspaper route that uh, took me past a railroad yard and, and uh, just just the, uh, the the interest in in the, the locomotives and and uh, uh, just watching this this equipment operate right in front of me that, that just really had me hooked from from the age of about uh, about ten I think awesome do you remember your first train uh, first first model, model or first model train I do not I, I think I started out in in N scale if I remember correctly okay, and, okay. and uh, so so some of the early work was with that but I, I know I had like some. Uh, well, I had some Tyco stuff before that time, and, and the typical, I think I had like a sheet of plywood on our pool table right, or something, yeah. so. Yeah. I was like me, uh, the, I used to get the uh, Sears Christmas catalog, and I used to, couldn't wait to go through and pick out which train I wanted. So, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, back back in the good old days there. Why did you decide to model the uh, Iowa Interstate? Well, it started off, uh, I was interested in, in the Union Pacific for, for probably a decade or more. I was, I was planning to model that. I, I kind of started down that path, but after a while, I just sort of got bored with uh, with with modeling so many examples of the same equipment. I I love SD40-2s, but uh, after after a dozen or so, it, it just got a little bit tedious, and and uh, I it just happened to to um, kind of stumble upon the Iowa Interstate at, at one point in uh, June of 2000, mm -hmm. and uh, just started uh, thinking about the possibility of of modeling that uh, just because in, in part because uh, they, they were running regular uh, UP detours uh, okay. in a few yep. years just a few years uh, prior to that and uh, uh, I, I thought I could sort of have, have the best of both worlds and have a, oh, have a bit more variety right um, have a have a nice mix of older power and and uh, so that's that's really what it uh, how it started out um, the fact that the Iowa Interstate has just a ton of super friendly employees that uh, uh, there's a lot of great information available that, that certainly helped to uh, encourage me in that direction as well. Sure, and then you picked HO scale and I, I noticed that it looked like you, you hand lay most of your track. Uh, did you hand lay all the track? Uh, probably about 
I'd say maybe 85, 90 percent. Um, the the only exceptions really were areas where I couldn't, uh, where the track was deeper in a scene, so I I really wasn't in a position to to lean in far enough to get to be able to eyeball it to to hand lay, but. Uh, uh, the majority is, is hand laid. Uh, now your yard here, uh, I guess it, it depicts what is in Council Bluffs, which is the west end of terminus of the uh, Iowa Interstate here. And then you, your model kind of goes to the east. Is that, that, is that what you have kind of modeled here? That's correct. Yeah, the, the, uh, uh, the Iowa Interstate just, uh, uh, once the trains reach Council Bluffs, then, then uh, they, they would uh, be broken down and and uh, uh, they would serve the, the local customers and then make the uh, uh, interchange, mo interchange moves with the UP and BNSF and, uh, and then uh, turn around and build the, the outbound uh, eastbound train uh, that evening. Okay, very good. I really like the detail that you have on your, your engine house here. I, I see that uh, it, it actually looks like the real thing. Uh, it, it, it's very, very neatly done, oh, and, thank you. and and everything seems to be, you know, uh, pretty much patterned after the, the way it looks. It, uh, I, I think that's been one of my favorite things about modeling a, a, a nearby prototype is the the ability to to get a lot of photos and measurements and and that type of thing and. And uh, uh, again, the, the employees at the Iowa Interstate had, had been extremely helpful in, in, in those days when, uh, uh, when I was building uh, scenes like that. So, Tell me about your bridge. I know that's been a kind of a, a long endeavor, painstaking, but it turned out very well. Oh, thank you. I, it, that, that's, it's a good example of, of uh, those situations where the things we fear the most, uh, you know, the, the answer is just to push through them and, and uh, uh, just take one step at a time. And, and uh, bridge building was, was uh, a, a part of the hobby that, that really, uh, uh, really scared me for, for a number of years, that uh, the, the idea of, of uh, uh, cutting my, my main line and, and uh, 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 just everything that was involved with that in order to, uh, to, to build a bridge, I just uh, that had always uh, brought up a, a bit of anxiety for me. But uh, I just sort of worked my way around the room, started with uh, the most simple example, uh, examples of bridges on the, on the prototype and, and then worked my way up to, uh, to this one. This is one of the last ones that uh, I built for the layout. and. It uh, uh, honestly, this, it, it took me a long time, but it's just it's just one of those things where uh, no one step was particularly complicated. It was just a matter of of stringing all those steps together and 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 uh, um, and, and pushing through. So uh, very nice job. And and I tell you, I, I have seen this bridge many times. And in fact, I'm I'm going to roll some B-roll footage here of the actual bridge. And you, you actually cannot tell that it's actually curved, and, and I really didn't know it was curved until you happened to mention it one day on an article, and, and then uh, I got to looking at uh, Google Maps and, and noticed that it was actually curved. So it's a it's a very slight curve to it, but uh, it, it was enough that I felt like this I could sort of justify the placement uh, uh, where I wanted to locate it here on the layout, and and it uh, it it's somewhat. Uh, uh, hopefully fit in with the scene uh, and, and the curve certainly you know didn't uh, uh, didn't didn't hurt in that uh, in that effort not at all and this was a all original Rock Island track is that correct uh, this portion of of the Iowa interstate and and before that uh, the Rock Island was actually originally part of the Chicago Great Western uh, this this was built as a Chicago Great Western bridge and um, in 1953 when the Rock Island constructed uh, uh, the Atlantic cutoff that was meant to to, uh, shorten and straighten their route between Atlantic and Council Bluffs. Um, part of that work involved connecting with the existing Chicago Great Western line into Council Bluffs and uh, uh, so between Peter and Rig uh, there there was this this portion where the Rock Island ran over that. Uh, eventually when the Chicago and Northwestern bought the, the CGW and um, the uh, the Rock Island became the, the sole operator on that line, and uh, and then when when the Iowa Interstate uh, uh, took over, then then uh, that was the case for them as well. So Joe, uh, tell me where are we set here on the uh, Iowa Interstate, and a little bit what's what's going on in this area with your grain facility and everything. 
this is Hancock, Iowa. This is um, the prototype is 32 miles east of Council Bluffs. Okay. Um, the elevator itself is located on what was once a uh, Rock Island branch line that, uh, that ran perpendicular to uh, the Atlantic cutoff after that was built. Hmm. And uh, uh, after the, the cutoff was completed, then uh, over time the, uh, the branch line uh, sort of compressed on both ends and, and what was left in Iowa interstate times was just this little segment that, uh, that dropped down from the main line and, and, uh, and, and served the elevator. Um, there's a little uh, segment of the uh, Oakland branch that, that runs under the, the main line, runs uh, onto the south, and um, uh, that is just used for car storage during, uh, during my, the, the time frame I, I model. Okay, Joe, I see you're using the uh, proto throttle here. Tell me, I understand you were kind of like one of the early onsetters with that. What, um, so what do you think about it? Um, yeah, you're right. I, I, uh, the good folks at uh, Iowa Scaled Engineering were kind enough to allow me to, to beta test the proto throttle, and uh, I had just, I have just had a blast with it. Honestly, it is, um, I, I would say it is right up there with the introduction of sound itself. Uh, oh, really? As far as yeah. the the impact it has had on on my enjoyment of hobby uh, of, of layout operations and and just the the, the hobby in general, I, I think it is. Has, has really been a, a complete game changer for me. Um, I, it's hard to imagine what it would be like to operate without it now. I, oh, wow. I, I think the, the very first time I picked it up, I was operating with it for about 20 minutes and I uh, uh, went back and did something with my, my old knob throttle and it just felt so wrong. It just felt so, <laughs> it, it was just, it, it was that much of a, of a, of a shift in, in my mindset in such a short time. And um, this has just been, it's, it's honestly, it's been, I, I expected big things of the proto throttle and uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's delivered um, that and, and much more for me. I it would be nice to see them make a steam version, but I have no clue how they would ever do that. But um, boy, it, yeah, it's, it's just totally changed the uh, realism, I guess, of the way you operate the train, that it's, it's more uh, actual um, prototype based. Yeah, I, I, I operated with really high momentum and braking and things like that before the proto throttle. Um, but this has just made it that much more enjoyable. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the 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 shift to thinking in actual notches, just like the the prototype engineers mm -hmm, right. do, um, it, it's been surprising to me just how much of a how how much that has has helped to sort of draw me into the prototype world and in my thinking as I operate and and uh, just just really been a, a a pleasure all the way around. Okay, Joe, I see all these little locks here on this. Uh on your, I guess these are switches. Is that is that what you got going on here? Right. Yeah. The the uh, uh, just recently I decided to to finally jump in and and uh, add locks to all of my mainline uh, turnouts as as the prototype does, and uh, uh, I'd been seeing people for many years, uh, uh, Lance Meinheim and James McNabb and others who uh, had been using switch locks. Um, and I had kind of hesitated uh, just because I thought the, uh, the work of actually unlocking the, the turnout would, uh, would be kind of cumbersome when I'm operating alone. Uh, but once I actually dove in and, and, uh, and tried it, I thought that uh, much like the proto throttle, I, I thought that the use of the locks actually added a lot uh, to operations, really brought my thinking into the, uh, into the prototype world. So what you have here is your unlocking tool with the key on it. Right, yeah, the, the, uh, these are just uh, Micromark uh, uncoupling picks uh, mm -hmm. that I've been using for years and in order to kind of simplify the, the use of the turnout, the, the switch locks, I just uh, drilled them out and added a key ring to the end for, uh, for the, the key for, for those locks. So. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Right. Joe, I really appreciate you uh, showing your layout with everybody here on What's Neat and isn't this just the greatest hobby in the world? It certainly is. It's, it's just been a blast. I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you stopping and by it's been uh, uh, been great to speak with you again and and uh, as it's uh, always a pleasure to come see your layout I always enjoy looking at it well you're always welcome thank well you. thank you so much thank you Joe thank you
For this segment of What's Neat, I'm standing here with James Regeer in the Magic House in beautiful downtown Kirkwood, Missouri. And James, I'm standing amidst this beautiful train layout that you all have on display, and you are the curator for this. Tell us about this layout, James. Well, this was a home layout built for Bill Kensfield uh, in, in his basement, and he donated it to the Magic House in Hull. And it's a, it's a beautiful two-level layout that represents Colorado in the 1950s. Yes. Um, yeah, of course, it has uh, the Kirkwood Station down here, um, some buildings labeled to match uh, St. Louis area sites. Um, I saw the Kirkwood Station there. Now, how many feet of track have you got on this layout, and how big is it? It's about uh, 16 by 20, I'd like to say, um, with uh, probably a main line of about 100 linear feet. Wow, double deck too, is that right? That's right. There's a balloon on the bottom, balloon on the top, and single track going up and down. Now, what do you power this layout with, James? NCE. It's, That's a good system. It works good for you? It's it's working very well for And us. this runs seven days a week, is that right? It runs seven days a week. Um, and it runs about six hours a day. Um, so these locomotives get put through the paces. Um, in fact, uh, I say that uh, when I've brought equipment onto this layout that isn't up to snuff, doesn't quite meet NRA couple height standards, <laughs> it will wreck them. So uh, it, it is a good uh, test of quality. Um, I found that uh, I found that we've been we've been rely running a lot of great stuff from Athern. I've really appreciated their uh, locomotives, their reliability long term. So that's awesome, man! Double deck layout. It's all yours to be had. This is like a real job. How great is this when you go to work? It's a uh, it's a really uh, it's a fun job. Uh, you know, I stumbled into this job. In fact, one day when I was here at the Magic House with my daughter and I'd seen signs around town at hobby shops looking for volunteers for this layout. And I said, well, I'm a stay-at-home dad mostly, so I don't know exactly how much time I'll be able to volunteer unless I can get childcare. And they said, you know what, we've given up on finding volunteers at this point. We are looking to hire somebody, and so there That's there awesome. I know you got a babysitter for the next two more hours, you told me today. Oh yeah, we're, we're taken care of. We have uh, we have uh, good childcare. This is a beautiful layout. Now, is there a website for the Magic House, or how can people find this to come visit? Um, just Google Magic House St. Louis Children's Museum. Um, I think it's magichouse.org. Okay. But I could be wrong about that, so at, at any rate, Google St. Louis, uh, Magic House St. Louis Children's Museum. That's awesome. So when you come on out here, tell everybody that you've heard about it on What's Neat, and come and meet James Regeer, one of the members of the What's Neat This Week podcast. So thank you very much, James, for sharing this beautiful layout with us on What's Neat. All right. Thank you. This is Michelle Kempema with What's Neat, and I am on the road in Long Island, and I'm here in Lenbrook at Trainland with Ken Bianco Jr., and I love this store. It's amazing. Tell us a little history of your store. Thank you. Well, um, <laughs> my grandfather started a long time ago. Um, he was actually a beautician and cut people's hairs and went on these award shows. And um, one year he got a train set for his kids okay. and the train set actually became worth more than what he paid for. <laughs> so he took the train set away from them, sold it, got them another train set, same thing <laughs> happened. So he was saying, you know what, I could probably make some money off of this. Yeah. So uh, after that started, um, he started accepting, uh, you know, giving out free haircuts <laughs> for trains. So bring in your old trains and we'll give a free haircut. So um, it just started from that and it started from his basement and then he opened up a shop, uh, Avenue M, 
then uh, we have Train World over in Ditmas and uh, yeah. now Trainland uh, retail store. So um, yeah, it, it was a long journey and now we're up to our third generation. Yeah, um, which is you. Yeah, my, <laughs> me, my, uh, my cousin Anthony, uh, and, uh, cousin Phil, uh, Paulie, so a lot of family involved and uh, like it's, it's still good, yeah. Family and trains are good. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, your retail store is full of amazing products, and, but I think your online business is even bigger than your retail, right? Oh, oh yeah, Ma mail order has <laughs> taken over and I think with any business now, um, mail order is such a big important aspect and um, we've kind of been able to kind of shift over and uh, mm -hmm. Uh, when it was the second generation, my father's generation, it was phone mail order, and now the third <laughs> generation is uh, internet orders. And uh, my uncle Tony in uh, the Brooklyn store is uh, a workaholic and just keeps on <laughs> shipping out orders. And uh, so it's nice. I, I I work with my father, and my cousin Anthony works with his father. So it's a, a great dynamic. That's so really you get a little old school and a little new school. And uh, you know, my cousin and myself bring in the new, newer aspect with the online mail order, yeah. uh, internet, and uh, our, our fathers have the more old world uh, uh, <laughs> charm with the yeah. internet magazines, stuff like that, so. Um, I love your layouts that you have in the store so people can try things. Yeah. Um, I was surprised I was looking at a train here and all of a sudden it starts honking and talking to me and doing yeah. all this stuff and there's a guy way over there with a the cell phone right, right, <laughs> controlling right. it. Yeah. Uh, that was really fun. You you absolutely let the public touch and play and I do find that just really drives imagination with kids. You know what, for a retail <laughs> store the best success is when the families, kids mm -hmm. are interactive. So they come into the shop and the kids want to, I mean, they're seeing oh, yeah. trains, they want to grab it, they want to touch it. So we, we let them use the remote controls. Mm -hmm. We have iPads, they could run them with their, their phones now. So the technology has gotten so advanced and developed. And um, so it's, I, I think Lionel has done a great job and other manufacturers as well, mm -hmm. trying to get kids into that, this hobby. So it's great. It, it's seeing a kid with, uh, you know, running the train back and forth is priceless. I agree. And uh, I don't think there's a shortage of kids that love this no, <laughs> at, not all. at all. No. Not at all. The people that say, oh, the hobby is, there's nobody at all. They're so wrong. Yeah. In fact, today you had tons of kids around here this morning. They were all playing with the train. We had to wait to do the interview because there were so many kids over here. Yep. So, um, I'm glad you, you kicked them out, right? <laughs> I kind of had to kick your kids out because we can't film with the kids here, but he does have them in here. <laughs> no, but it, the, the, the kids are great. And, um, yeah. It, w it was nice to see them come in early this morning and gr great to see you see a retail store have the kids playing <laughs> yes. with the train. Yes, so. um, your retail store, just it, it just gives me that feeling of nostalgia and fun and like that whole, I'm getting a train today uh, kind of feeling. It's just nice to have a, a retail front. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank uh, you cover every product here. Uh, what's your largest uh, selection? To, I, to me, it looks like maybe Lionel. So uh. <laughs> for the general public, when people yeah. come in and want a starter set, uh, Lionel by far is the name they know. Yeah. Um, the first thing they say, oh, my father had it when he was a kid or <laughs> yeah. my, my mother. And uh, so that's like the biggest um, <laughs> recognition that we have. And uh, by far, general public coming in is it's, Lionel is king. So. But you also cover everything the prototype modeler would want here. Oh, yeah. So uh, for the hardcore <laughs> hobbyists, yeah. we have HO, N scale, G scale. Um, mm -hmm. We have all the trains, scenery, woodland scenic. So um, HO is actually very popular. <laughs> and yeah. um, so we, we do it all. Yeah, I, everything I could think of buying they have in the store. <laughs> it's already here. So, well, thanks for letting me come out and talk to you today. Thank you so much, Michelle. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you were able to get a little taste of train land, train world in uh, yeah. New York. And uh, anytime you want to come back, we're more than happy to have you. That's awesome. Oh, and I should say it was easy to get here. I came from Times Square this morning. Got on a subway, got on the Long Island Railroad, which was a fun experience. Yeah, I got yeah. to ride a train to a train star. And even on the little short walk here, there was a Dunkin' Donuts, so I got breakfast too. There you go. <laughs> it's <wicked>. What's <laughs> better than that? Yep, yep. So if you want to visit this store, if you're anywhere near New York, this is an easy yep. place to get to. And of course, there's online ordering too. Yep. Uh, what are your store hours here? 
So uh, summer hours are different than yeah. winter hours. So winter hours, <laughs> we're going to be open more. Summer hours, um, shorter hours. But uh, generally, Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturday, like 10 to 5. Okay. Yep, that's awesome. Well, thank you. I hope you all come and check out Train Land and Train World. Thanks. All of the model railroad products seen in this episode of What's Neat are available through Caboose in Lakewood, Colorado, or order online at mycaboose.com. Thank you.